Hey guys, this is Carl Hooker checking in. Uh, hoping you guys are doing okay out there. I am actually coming to you live from my office in my house. Like most of you, I'm working from home. And with that comes a lot of other things that we have to struggle with, like the fact that I'm wearing a shirt here, but I actually have shorts on down here, which is really fun. But in all seriousness, uh, I hope to help you guys over the next uh, several days or weeks with a series of videos and ideas when it comes to remote learning or learning from home. Today's topic, a beginner's toolkit for remote teaching. Check it out. So really, I'm gonna go over five different ideas. And the first idea is that as a teacher, no matter anything, before we even dive into content, we wanna make sure that we are communicating with consistency. And what that means is pick a platform. It could be Seesaw, it could be Google Classroom, it could be uh, Remind or other tools that you use to communicate, or it could be something as simple as email. Now, I do apologize because in the background, you can hear uh, my own kids out there playing. Uh, they're actually playing a math game as we speak. Yes, we are those amazing parents. <laughs> no, we're not. Number two, before you really get into content again, make sure that you are supporting your learners. And that could be something as simple as just reaching out with a quick video message, saying hello, making sure they're doing okay, and just checking in on them. Remember that they are also going through a, a troubling time right now when it comes to this. They are stuck at home, their parents are stuck at home with them. And uh, a lot of times that could be confusing for kids. Some kids are excited that they're out of school, it's an extended spring break, uh, but make sure that whatever you do as a teacher, sending them messages of support are important. Number three, one of the ideas I've seen quite a bit is having virtual office hours. You may notice that there's a lot of platforms out there that are now coming out with uh, free ways to use their tools. Uh, things like Google Meet Hangout, Cisco's WebEx or Zoom are great tools to use when you want to do remote one-to-one uh, -one virtual video face-to-face -face instructions. One word of advice when using these tools, just make sure you keep it brief. Don't spend a lot of time having direct instruction over a video. Kids you know, usually can go five, 10 minutes. So if you are doing instructions or doing one-on-one -on -one time, make sure it's conversational um, and keep it kind of informal as much as you can. Don't think that you could substitute an entire 50-minute class period for a 50-minute virtual face-to-face. Uh, -face. It'll actually go a lot quicker. Number four is the one that many teachers are concerned about, and that's the idea between content delivery and retrieval. So many schools have something called an L. LMS, that's a learning management system. An LMS is a way that you can get information, get uh, content, get documents back and forth, uh, but it doesn't have to be the only way. There's other ways you could kind of hack it, if you will. You can use things like Google Drive. You could uh, have a kid's email you. Again, be careful because that email could fill up pretty quickly. Um, so be thinking about different ways that you can get that content back and forth. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to content, there's really two different strategies around this. There's the what we call the synchronous model, and then there's also the asynchronous model. Now, the synchronous model would go something like um, at Monday at 9.30, you're going to do this math lesson uh, for, for 50 minutes, and that's gonna be your scheduled time every day throughout the week. I will say that when you're trying to do the synchronous model, there are some challenges when it comes to tech and making sure that all your kids are connected. Of course, that's a challenge with all of these tools is making sure your kids have connectivity, um, and we'll get into that in another video. The asynchronous model is one that m is more preferred for schools when it comes to home learning, and that is to send home a series of projects, ideas, uh, and things for them to do throughout the week, and then students will go on and complete those tasks throughout the week at their own time and then turn those into you. Um, both models have their merits and both have their downfalls. For now, um, when you're thinking about these two ideas, I would always prefer the asynchronous model only because I feel like uh, it gives your kids some opportunity to struggle with the tech a little bit if they need to get over it. They don't have to be there at that exact moment. And it gives parents time to adjust and work with their students throughout the week. The fifth and final one is the idea and power of reflection. And that's important to think about throughout this whole process, making sure your students, your kids have taken the time to reflect on all the things that they're going through, all the things that they're learning, that really helps them embed that learning. You can use lots of tools for reflection. They can do things from writing in an actual journal, you have kids do video reflections on a flip grid. I've also seen the use of the tool called Bulb, which is an e-portfolio tool where teachers and students will actually go through and reflect on different ideas and strategies of things that they learned. So you're really reflecting on the learning process. And all reflection to me, I think is an important thing to think about at the end of every day with kids. And maybe that's something as simple as, what was one thing I learned today? What's one thing I wanted to do do today that I didn't get to do? Um, things like that. So using the power of reflection at home is an important thing too. And as a teacher teaching remotely, make sure you include that as part of your toolkit. All right, there you go. Those are my five ideas for a beginner's toolkit for teaching remotely. Remember folks, Stay healthy, stay sane, and stay safe. I'll be checking with you throughout the week. Good luck and happy learning.
Thank you.